Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, so many website options. Today we're gonna go through and tell you why I love Shopify above all else and cover nine mistakes to avoid when setting up your store. Just a disclaimer, I am not paid by Shopify. I just use them for all my stores. I'm Davey, I've got 10 e-commerce brands. We've got over 2 million customers and we sell a product every 20 seconds. And this is my YouTube guide. The landscape of choosing an e-commerce website has changed so much even since I started. I only started about three and a half years Years ago. Back then, you had ClickFunnels, Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, and Magento. Shopify is becoming the market leader, which is pretty obvious based on its share price. There are definite advantages when picking a dominant player for your platform. When you go to integrate either your warehouse or certain apps, they're probably first and foremost gonna have a Shopify integration. The other thing is with all of these data privacy changes, it's gonna be amazing to have someone with a dominant amount of traffic to create first party solutions. By the looks of things, Shopify is making headway with this with Shopify audiences. They also did a fantastic job with Cappy and the iOS 14.5 updates. Shopify is getting so good that even existing stores that probably did a full custom build with a team are now migrating over to Shopify. Even JB Hi-Fi uses them. Have a look at this amazing list of brands that actually use Shopify. All right, so the first mistake that I see a lot of people make with designing websites, they over-design it. They think that if it looks pretty, it's gonna work. That is the complete opposite. It needs to be incredibly easy to use and digest on the user. People do not want to have to learn to use your website. This is why using one of the default themes is actually really effective. It's fast and it's simple. People are familiar with it. A lot of people laugh when they see our websites and they say, how can you be doing this much money? Of course we could design them better and we've actually split tested really nicely designed sites versus our current sites and they almost always lose. If you want to improve your website's design and therefore branding, you need to do it through split test, CRO. Make constant positive iterations in both design and function. The second mistake that I often see people make and it's often because they've over designed it is their website is so slow. Use Google speed test or Gmetrics to test your site speed. Again, Shopify has done an amazing job at making their standard templates very, very fast and it's only getting better. The third mistake that I see people make is that their product imagery is just not up to scratch. I've mentioned that content is so important for Facebook ads, but it's also important for your website. Make sure you have really high quality images. Show the product being used in its best sense. How does it actually function? Show product features, show close-ups of fabrics. All of this can be done on an iPhone. Just make sure you have incredible lighting and don't over edit the photos. If you wanna make it more branded, you can get photography paper in your brand colors and do a photo shoot. This will give your website a very professional and functional look. The fourth mistake is people overcomplicate their copy. It needs to be direct response copy. You're not telling a narrative. You're basically telling the customer what you are going to do for them. Make it conversational. Don't use long words that are hard to understand. Again, you want it really easy to digest. Fifth mistake is people leaving off any social proof. You want to get reviews. You want to get customer feedback. You want to get public applications to talk about your product. All of this social proof is gonna create trust with the user that you're not a scammer or a drop shipper. The next mistake that I see people make is really hiding their shipping information. You need to really be clear on your product page how the product is actually gonna to get to the person. The duration and the fact that it's either free shipping or whatever it is to their region. The seventh mistake that I see people make is not having their customer service information very, very clear. This is gonna remove trust. You either want a phone number or an email, or, and you also want a contact us page. A great place to put all of this information is actually in a FAQ spot on your product page. This is often referred to as an accordion. The eighth mistake that I often see people use, which is also avoided by using just one of the default templates, is not focusing on mobile first. You need to make sure your mobile functionality is there. 80% of traffic is mobile, so don't ignore it. You can even start by designing your website, looking in the mobile editor. And finally, I just really wanna reiterate, you need to make sure that you are selling your features and your benefits of your products. This can be done through imagery, GIFs, copy, it doesn't matter, but you need to sell the product. Is it GIFs or GIFs? Let's just go with GIFs or GIFs. 
hit me in the comment section. All right, so there are some rapid fire examples of mistakes not to make. The next thing I'm gonna teach you is how to optimize your Shopify store. Before I tell you the Shopify apps to add, just be aware that Adding some apps can slow down your website. There's often these crazy upsell apps that can actually slow down your site and cause more harm than good. You will not be able to see this effect because this app will be reporting that it's given you X amount of sales, but it isn't calculating the sales that it's subtracting because of its website speed. So just be very aware before you download an app. The main apps that I love is obviously Klaviyo for email marketing. We'll get into that later. You can set up all your basic flows and automation so that when you drive a customer from Facebook, you're getting their email and nurturing them and hopefully converting them down the line. Another similar app is either Postscript or SMS Bump. These are SMS apps. So if someone abandons their cart, you can then message them and get them back to purchase. In terms of reviews and getting social proof, Okendo is a great app. It can give you sizing options to make customers really understand the product before they buy. The final one is Fontify. It's a cheap app and you can just change your font of your website with a couple of clicks. It saves you a bunch of time, but you can also do it in the back end of Shopify if you know what you're doing. Again, I'm not sponsored by Shopify or any of these apps. I just use them in my own store. So that's basically all the main mistakes that you need to avoid. And if you can do that and the product's great, you're gonna find a lot of success with Facebook ads. We're gonna take some time now to review some websites from our community post of our viewers. Let's jump into it. All right, so we've got Melbourne Bush Food. Obviously, as an Australian, I love this. My first bit of advice is this headline needs to be extremely catchy. It needs to, in the simplest terms, explain what your business is. A social mission is fantastic, but this headline is incredibly important to just explain what you do. Otherwise, people will just bounce off the page. We've also got more about the mission down here. It's kind of repeating itself. I think you really need to make sure that you're talking about the customer as well as what you're trying to achieve. So I'm halfway down the page and I'm still not exactly sure of what this business does. I think it's really important that that top headline gets changed. This is fantastic social proof. Obviously, as an Australian, I know all of these places and it's really making me feel that I can trust this site. All right, so we're now down to a product page and I'm starting to actually understand what this is. They're selling a variety of bush food from Australia, including spices and I think this looks like chocolate. I don't mind this collection page changer. I think the product imagery could be more uniform. If they just got a white sheet and proper light, they could maybe shoot these all in the exact same way and it would feel more cohesive. Icons are great. They're very simple and easy to digest. And now we've got reviews. 10,000 plus happy customers is great. And they've also got some photos, which is awesome. You really want photo reviews to increase the authenticity. They've also got some blogs, which is awesome. I'd like to know the strategy behind those blogs, if it's an SEO play, or if they're actually driving traffic to it. And then I could probably give a bit more advice about how to structure it. Finally, they've got their newsletter down here. There's actually no offer here. It's really important to put an offer such as a discount or some kind of gift to incentivize people to subscribe. They've got all of their payment icons, including Afterpay, which is really important for Australians. One thing I have noticed just scrolling down this page is that I haven't actually had a pop-up yet. They may not be utilizing email marketing enough. I think this header bar is quite good. Australian made and owned is awesome. All right, let's go to the next one, Bricktown World. So again, I'm a little bit unsure what they sell when first clicking on here. It's really important that we fix this. I like this header bar. They're telling that you can get free shipping over a certain order. It's gonna bump up AOV. I'm gonna take a different approach and I'm gonna go through and try to pretend to be a customer. I'm gonna click here. It looks like they're selling pretty awesome t-shirts. Their size selection all looks good. Let's see if their size chart works. Very informative and simple to read. They've also got all of these features of their product, which is really, really well laid out. So that's gonna be easy to digest and understand. Even if people don't understand GSM, it almost sounds fancy. They can definitely understand 100% pure organic cotton. Washing instructions is also very important. People love to know that they can wash it in their washing machine. They've got their shipping options, which is also really important. If I had to be critical, may just because they've got a brand new product, is there's no reviews on this product yet. Let's go to another product and see if they've got those reviews on them. Again, another really cool design, still no reviews. I think they need to incentivize customers to leave a review. I also like how they've got this fits true to size and the model height. 
They've really informed the customer about what they're gonna get. All right, let's go to the next one, X Tools. One of the most clear things that stands out is they haven't set up their favicon yet. Coming to this store, I do lose a little bit of trust because it isn't quite designed enough. Just saying their brand name there, along with the logo, doesn't really inform me of anything. They could easily use like something like Fontify to also make this text a little bit more interesting and on brand. They definitely need to work on their copy and these either look like fake reviews or just really, really short reviews, in which case they probably need to be fleshed out. Let's go to the product page. So they've got one product and not much structure to their copy or their design. Definitely a lot of work that they need to do. I suggest going to some other dropshipping sites and actually dissecting what they're doing before you run ads because I don't think this will work. All right, let's go to the next one. Sentimental Lashes. Obviously a UK site with the .co.uk. The first thing I notice about this is that it's alternative to all the other themes that we've been looking at. And this is bad because this is gonna make up me actually think about how to use this website. There's no call to action button here. This button, if there was one here, would be the most clicked button on your website. You really wanna have it here to push them to achieve what you're trying to achieve, which is probably a product page and a sale. I think this is hyperbole and it isn't really constructive. I would say this line, sentimental lashes, gives you luxurious length and volume without that false lash effect. That is their value proposition. I would say that is the most important line up here. You can put that as your main headline. Scrolling down, we've got lashes here. Product imagery definitely needs to be more uniform. If these are all different types of lashes, it makes sense to have them as different products. If not, you should probably just have one product with the text and then the sizing actually being a selection on this product page. The logo has a different color background so it actually needs to be removed or the rest of the page needs to be pink. I would probably remove it and just do a black line logo. A lot to be fixed up on this site as well before I would run Facebook ads. Also the AOV is gonna be incredibly low. This probably needs to be a subscription play. I'd definitely be looking at a lot of these other popular Lash brands and replicating their sites before trying to run ads to this. The Tory Watchers. First thing I do notice is the great product imagery. They're on the right track, but the actual layout of this homepage is a little bit strange. I'd be interested to see how this looks on mobile. Again, some great imagery. Let's go to the product page and see what we can see. Definitely needs more copy on here. I've kind of lost trust on what I'm actually buying. The copy should probably be sitting up here, what we refer to as above the fold. You can use some dot points to make it easy to digest, sell the features of the watch. What's the material? What's the unique selling proposition? They do have a floating add to cart, which is pretty good. These can definitely increase conversion rate. They don't have afterpay though, which is a big bummer. It's really important if they do sell in Australia to have afterpay. Just gonna click add to cart, definitely sell in Australia. I would probably have your logo here. There's actually other apps that you can use to pull these kind of features into this right hand column. You can definitely do it with Shopify Plus. Then you can have your logo and branding there, which should increase some trust. Overall, the founder's on the right track with the imagery and just needs to make a couple of changes before I'd probably run ads. I think their product looks nice and they've got some good imagery. It may be a really saturated market, which will make it tough, but if they fix their website and shoot some really good video ads, they may be able to run some profitable Facebook ads. All right, final website. They've got their pop-up sale here, giving the code straight away. This should definitely be an email pop-up up if they're gonna give a code. Say 20% off if you enter your email and when they enter the email, you'll give them the code. That way you can put them through a nurture flow and educate them further when they leave the site. I've clicked shop now and it didn't actually change anything, which is a little bit strange. They're doing print on demand portraits for pets, which is quite funny. I have seen these working a fair bit on Facebook. We can go through to their product page. It's automatically converting to English, which is okay. If you are running serious traffic from multiple regions, you may wanna consider not setting up on a subdomain and actually buying the regional domain for that. So for example, if it was UK, it was .co.uk or if it's France, buy .fr. They're using Luke's down here, which is pretty common a great photo review app to try to create trust. The probably main thing that I'm looking at here is there's just no explanation of what happens after they order. And there's just no instructions about how to upload the photo or anything like that. If you went to Western Willow, however, a really popular brand doing a similar thing, they would have far more information actually on the product pages, trying to explain how it works. So these are the simple mistakes a lot of people make. If you want, leave a comment below. And what I'll do is I'll take you through the whole process. We'll set up a store together. I'll show you all of these features that I've talked about and how they work. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week.